Previously on Higurashi When They Cry console arcs. Before long, the doctor finished the medical exam. He told Tomoe to get some rest for now, and then exited the room along with the nurse. After seeing them go, Fujita began speaking in a whisper. ちょうど港の夜景を見に来ていたアベックが通報してくれましてね。奇想のハヤミさんの話では、2人折り重なるようにして倒れていたと。本当に、ご無事で何よりです。ごめんね、心配かけちゃって。車はハヤミさんたち
but with a strong, sincere, fearless smile. Takeo is a high class. I can't be able to deal with the size of 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 the size. そしてお前さんは十分すぎることの基礎固めをしてくれただからあとは信じて手を引けいいな<笑>はい前野君確かに千葉を上げる前に知見特捜部は諦めちまうんでしょう公安も秋山からの話ではすでに引退して何の権限もないじいさんに責任を全部押し付けてそいつを見せしめにするのが関の山だとでももうやつにこれ以上死の承認気取りはさせません何年がかりになってでもローエルとのパイプを外交筋からぶった切ってやります絶対にねそんなに意気込んで大丈夫かね政治家に喧嘩を売って無事で済んだ例はあまり聞かないぞ<笑>それがどうしたですよやれるものならやってみればいいただし姫さんと違ってそれ相応の見返りは受けてもらいますけどねマイノーズアイズは火にな and turning red But when Yamoki started feeling suspicious of his violent reaction He suddenly spoke up 笑ってもらって構いませんが俺は運命だと勝手に思っています運命未来さんが追っていた事件の謎をその娘がこじ開けた運命があるのならこれ以上のものはないだから俺は自分のキャリアをこれにつぎ込むつもりです何どうせダメでも気楽な独り身だ全て終わった後は田舎の駐在所で一生過ごすのも悪くないと思っていますなるほどなこれひょっとしてレターコードえ何それレターコードってのは空港名または航空会社名を表すアルファそして2文字表記は大抵航空会社名を指す C1 は確かセントラル第一航空そして LX はロベルタ航空のことよへえさすがシチュアーレスに憧れてたお姉ちゃん詳しいね。But she could no longer even hear Maka's teasing. And then, when she noticed Fuchida coming back after buying a couple of cans of juice, Tommy rushed at him seemingly in a fit of anger. Fuchida, just a minute. What? What is it, Minai? Please, the Central Air Force and Roberta Air Force. For the past 20 years, the record of the past 30 years. どうしたの急にそれにロベルタ航空なんてもうないよどこかの航空会社と合併したって前ニュースで見たものあどこと合併したのああそれなら俺知ってますセントラル第一航空と合併して今はセントラル航空って名前になっていますよセントラル航空もうあまり時間もないので。腹を割ってお話ししますどうやらあなた方は検察の連中に資料を渡してあとはお任せする心づもりなのかもしれませんしかし名古屋にはもう千葉の息のかかったやつらの手が回っていますですからあなたたちは資料のコピーを渡して原本は残しておきたいとお考えでしょうが連中は上の命令を盾にしてそれも回収するつもりですそれこそ根こそぎでね<笑>それに名古屋さんは適度なラインでことを収めるきています残念ですがあなた方が期待する結果にはならないでしょう適度なラインということは千葉の逮捕まで行かないってことですかそうですあなた方が確保した秘書の塚田それに問題のありそうな企業と観光庁の担当者を何人か挙げてぞそれが彼らの妥協点でしょう薬事法違反の絡みで厚生省の麻薬取締部の動きも気になりますが聞いたところによると現状有力な証拠をつかむまでには至っていないようですからそして親玉への追及は
政治的な判断で見送られる予定ですそんなまさかというお気持ちはよくわかります私だって検事だ身内の信用を貶めるようなことは言いたくないただはっきり言ってこの一件に関わる黒幕連中はそんじょそこらの犯罪グループなんかとは規模も力も違う追及を逃れるためならルールブックを書き換えてしまうことさえやってのけますよそして現在政財官において偉くなってる連中はロウェル義国の悪影響に苦しんだ奴らばかりですだからもしその過去の事例を挙げて今回の未認可役の問題で騒ぎが大きくなれば同様に副作用的な影響が出てしまうと千葉がそう言って閣僚たちあるいは厚生省の幹部を巧みに説得したとすればどうなりますあっ<笑> They want to revive the sinking pharmaceutical industry, so they do everything they could to downplay the case in order to reduce the impact of the, of the aftermath. Thinking about it, she could see it happening. The district prosecutor would limit the bribery charges to Secretary Sukada and then close the investigation before it could be blinked back to any hospitals linked in, involved in the transactions. That way, the social impact could be kept under control. The case of these dangerous drugs would come to an end. And as a result, Chiba himself would be able to evade pursuit. Ar Tedo, I was so stay that's more this tongue. You hurry. So not in Musk. Joe Kyoa Yoku Arimasen. Sorry. Ima, I'm not a soul sink on a cause in my desna. Isa, sorry, I'm a husband. Dying she there, Chibani Taishteva. Tai Hodokuroka. 長所すらまともに取れなくなるですから今しかないチャンスは本当にあと数日なんです<笑> Make it or break it time, huh? 確かみゆきちゃん、yeah! えひょっとしてあなた赤坂と知り合いなんですか Hearing told my mother that name Sorimachi looked up in surprise. And when he responded immediately with the name Akasaka, she knew for certain that her re recollection was correct. Sorimachi san, Shitre desu ga, Akasaka san to wa, do itta kankei nan desu ka? Eh, eh, Daigaku jidai no kouhai de ne. Yoku kazok komi de kampu ni ikun de, kore wa sono toki ni totta shashin nan desu yo. Sore dake de? Suramachi answered her, feeling a little frustrated that they were having small talk at a time like this, but when he realized how seriously Tomei was listening to his words, he was quickly able to pick up on where his conversation was going. Were the two of them just acquaintances? Or did the two of them have a deeply trusting relationship? That's what she was trying to find out here. None of them. He didn't know how well acquainted this chief inspector was with his sworn brother. Nonetheless, Suramachi decided to gamble on those odds and started talking about Akasaka, hoping it would be enough to win her trust. Kebu-san. 自分一人が勝手な理想の中に生きることなく他の人々もそれぞれに正義を持って生きていることを信じてその心に訴えかけてだからどうかあなたのことも信じさせてくださいお願いしますわかりましたこんな俺を信頼してくれて本当に感謝しますあなたの見る目が正しかったことをしっかりと証明してみせますよ And so it continues. Greetings! My name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of the Higurashi When They Cry console arcs. Alright, everybody. Let's see if this little gamble of Tomoe's ends up paying off, which I'm sure it's going to. But even so, can't help but be a wee bit tense for what's going to happen today. 
Tomei entrusted Fujita and the others to handle the submitting materials to Joint Investigation HQ, and left Kakuchi Station with so Soramachi. Giri-giri safe, deした ne. Just as the two of them hopped in a car and were about to start the engine, four station wagons and vans entered through the main gate to the station and stopped in a guest parking spot. Then, the door swung open and then men dressed in suits climbed down in a hurry and rushed to the station lobby. ご安心ください。<laughs> お気遣い。痛みところであなたは資料を引き渡しの場に立ち会わなくてもよろしいのですかえっと、実は私、現在謹慎中なもので、本当はここにいちゃいけないんですよ。well, that just works out for us then, because that means we don't have to stick around. Tomei smiled as she said that, while Sole driving through the gate and exiting the Kakuchi's pol uh, police station. Then, while on the National Highway en route to the Kakuchi train station, she briefly explained to Soromachi the circumstances behind the key. なるほど。それで。その鍵は塚田から受け取ったものなんですかええ。当初は何の鍵なのかわからなかったんですが、これと同じ形状の鍵を下級地駅前のコインロッカーで見たと、さっき私の妹が教えてくれたんです。それを今
deep in his heart, Soromachi applauded her. Anta, いい女ですね。死んだ女房の次くらいに惚れちまいそうですよ。ハハハハ。まさかまさか。Soramachi <笑> cheerfully laughed back, playing off as a joke. In reality, he was feeling somewhat attracted to her, but he kept that to himself. Fortunately, traffic was fairly light, so Tomoe and Soromachi arrived at the station shortly after. They parked in a nearby lot and walked at a brisk pace toward the staff room beside the ticket gate. According to the station attendant, there were lockers located next to the ticket offices at the north and south entrances, and the numbers are common to both. So, Tomoe looked at the number key on the ta key tag and decided to check the south entrance first. It was an area off in the shadows, and most of the lo lockers were in use, possibly for long periods of time. And then... She immediately found a locker the same number, off in the back. Naturally, it was locked. And the fee must have been paid fairly recently because, unlike some of the surrounding lockers, it wasn't marked overdue. <laughs> Tomoe suppressed her racing thoughts as she said that to Soromachi beside her, then stirred the key into the keyhole. Could chink. The lock released with a light twist. <sighs> Then, she took a deep breath and slowly opened the, do the door. <laughs> she immediately lost her voice. There was nothing inside. It was totally empty. What? What is this? もう千葉の手の物が回収した。可能性としてはありま残念です。Those <laughs> bastards are just on top of everything, aren't they? Overwhelmed with regret, Tomei tightly clenched her fists. She wasn't expecting much, but the disappointment was immense. If everything Soromachi said was true, Tomoe's enemies were crafty and scrupulous enough to steal these materials. They could have easily foreseen that he was hiding something here. Even though she thought it was useless, Tomei stuck her head inside the locker to look around, but she couldn't find any signs of any sort of message. <laughs> this was Sukata, so he must have had something important hidden here. Something capable of dealing a fatal blow to Chiba. And he entrusted it to Tomoe. And yet there was nothing she could do to repay that trust. He was very cautious and hated to depend on others. But he deliberately entrusted it to her as an ally, only for it to be snatched away by the enemy. あきらめるのはまだ早いです。ひょっとしたらここ以外のロッカーかもしれません。俺も手伝いますので、この近辺に似たようなものがないか探して。ソリマチさん。同じメーカー、同じ形状、同じ番号。それだけの条件を揃え
as she was still feeling discouraged and her mind was blank. But all of a sudden, a strange sense that something was out of place spread throughout her body. Think it through from the beginning. Why would someone as prudent as Tsukata have bothered to hand her a numbered key in the first place? No matter how much she trusted, he trusted Tomoe, if she were killed and the key was taken away, it would all be over. So if he really wanted to entrust his secret to Tomoe alone, he probably would have just given her a key and verbally told her the number and location. Plus... Tsukada deliberately said that as he handed her the key. Then, maybe he was trying to convey a certain shared understanding between the two of them. If that's the case, then maybe... どうかしましたか警部さん。え同じメーカー、同じ形状、同じ番号。3つの条件を満たす確率はほとんどゼロです。ただ、ロッカーが既製品であ その可能性はほんの少しだけ上がると思います。ま、まあ、確かに。てことは、ここにあるロッカー、しらみつぶしに探すってことですかいえ。なんとなくですが、検討はついています。Right. The esteemed politician that Tsukada had been telling Tomoe about ever since his days as a student council. Cromwell. And the year of his revolution was, what was it, 19, 1500 or something? 1642, okay. She found a locker bearing that number a short distance away from the previous one. Cromwell started the Puritan Revolution in 1642. So, however... Yeah, <laughs> It went to the keyhole without any resistance, but it refused to rotate. Which meant this was the wrong key. どうします?ここにある全部片っ端から試してみますか。いいえ、これじゃなかったら終結した年の一六四九あるいはその間の番号もあります。他にも。Just then. Tell me thought back once again to the words Tsukada said right after giving her the key. Those words. They were strangely abrupt and out of context of the conversation. Then, maybe. As she said that, Tomei walked over and stopped in front of the locker, 1688. That was the year, that was the year. Puritan, that, that was the year, decades after the Puritan Revolution, where the Bloodless Revolution successfully forced the king to abdicate to the throne. <gasps> it worked! The key had rotated half a turn full of resistance and let out an unlocking sound. And then. This <laughs> Inside were two thick files, and a document case so bloated it looked like a package. Immediately after that, the two of them head to the car with the files in hand. Then, when they rush inside the car and open the, one of the files to read it, Soromachi cried out in a voice that couldn't hide his excitement. Ko sugoi! His hands were trembling in excitement, 
and a thick stream of sweat was sticking to his forehead even as in this air-conditioned car. The first file was apparently a sort of diary, recording Akihiro Chiba's activities. Damn, Sikara, you've really done your research. Looking at a different file, Tome was equally surprised. The details of every donation given to Representative Akihiro Chiba were written there, along with the accounts of the people involved. There were so many zeros in the amounts, it was hard to think of them as simply political contributions. And what's more, the payees weren't limited to Japanese companies. There were a significant number of foreign currency calculations, which suggested that a lot of these contrib contributions came from foreign companies. <laughs> so Romachi removed the contents from the thick envelope. And as soon as he saw what it was, he forgot he was in a car, tried to stand up, hit his head on the ceiling, and it fell back down. Careful there, uh, Sheriff. But even as he grimaced in pain, he opened his eyes wide and began to let out a loud laugh right in front of Tomoe. ど、どうしましたこれ写真。写真ですよ。どこで誰と会っていたかがわかる場所で本人たちの顔がはっきりとわかるアングルで撮影してやがる。こいつもこいつも全部誰が誰だかわかる。<笑> The photographs clearly depicted the faces of Chiba and the people meeting with him. Tsukai probably hired a freelance photographer to covertly take these. In other words, he'd been pursuing Chiba from the very beginning for this explicit purpose. Knowing how meticulous and obsessive he was, Tomoe had mixed feelings. This evidence would likely be a very powerful weapon for Soromachi and his men. But in order to obtain it, Sukai had to sacrifice his future, his dreams. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten, Sukada! Is it really necessary to give up something so precious in order to do the right thing? Considering what's at stake here, I can't, I can't really criticize them for it. <laughs> キソに持ち込んでも十分後半を維持できます。いや、それどころか連中の動かしているアルファベットプロジェクトそのものを叩き潰すことだって。反り町さん。何ですか？そこまで行って、もし東京地検さんが張り子の虎だったら、私はあな
休暇を取ってでも駆けつける行事はほとんど後日8ミリで見ていますおまけに危険な捜査の時もあって明日をも知れない身だつくづく罪作りな父親だと思っていますあですかねそんな俺のことを息子は尊敬すると言ってくれてるんですそして将来は俺か赤坂のように正義を守る仕事に就きたいってね涙が出ましたよだから俺はあいつのためにも胸を張って職務に誇りを持てる自分でありたいと思っているんです青臭いかもしれませんけどね反町さん While listening to Sorimachi's explanation, Tomei couldn't help but think it reminded her of her father. Her father was an equally busy person. She almost never got to spend time with him on holidays. Not for school events, or track, or field competitions. She could count the number of times she came, he came out to see her on one hand. But despite that, no, because of that, Tomei was happy that her father listened to her and showed her kindness whenever he came back, no matter how tired he was. Moreover, she felt ecstatic on those rare occasions when her father did manage to come out to see her. Her memory of her parents was more than just the time they spent together. She understood that now. And the thought of Sorimachi and his son having a similar parent child relationship somehow brought a smile to her face. あなたが望んだ最高の形を俺たちは絶対に実現させてみせますよ Then, Suramachi left the car saying he, saying he'd head back to Tokyo immediately Tomei watched him go as he headed to the ticket gate then disappeared His parting words were this, May this be the dawn of our victory celebration Hopefully そっか。東京地検にあれを渡したのか。Oh, yeah, I did. 勝手に判断して申し訳ありません。本来なら、塚田さんの了解を得てからと思っていたのですが。いや、いいんだ。俺はついさっきまで昏睡状態だったし。物事にはタイミングがあるからな。Tomei was sitting on a folding chair beside the bed, hanging her head, but Sakai raised her, his upper body and shook his head to answer her. She confessed the whole situation to him, expecting to receive some reproach, but surprisingly enough, he listened quietly without prying too deeply. Mushiro, Yoko ore no kozaiku ni kizuite kreta munda. Ano rokka no shikake o shitte to noa. 俺が随分世話になった前の駅長だけでな無理を言って鍵を付け替えてもらったんだその人も去年亡くなっただから多分そこに裏帳簿をしまっていたことは千葉と側近たちも知らないだろううまくいったのはたまたまですだけどもし外れでも私は全部のロッカーを試すつもりでしたあなたが意味のないことをする人ではないと思っていましたから<笑>お前だったら何も伝えなくてもきっと場所を突き止めてもう一度こういう形で出会ったのが運命なんだったらそれにかけてみようと思った手間をかけさせてすまなかったない,いえそんな Suka woke up early in the morning two days after the exchange with Soromachi, and the detective watching his hospital room, Takayashiki, immediately contacted Tomoe. 
As soon as she heard that, Tomei decided to forgo sleep and rushed to the hospital to interrogate Tsukada. And she had just finished questioning him. <笑>まあ、事情が事情だけに大げさな形になったが、結局のところ、ただの急性アルコール中毒だからな。ご心配には及ばないさ。それでも安心しました。大丈夫だとは医師も言ってくれていましたが、Plus, depending on a person's physical condition, even acute alcohol poisoning can result in death. It's easy to laugh about it now that he's woken up, but the situation wasn't always so forgiving. I see someone's been reading the tabloids. この場合、どういう処分だ。本人の意思で運転席に座っていたわけではありませんから、塚田さんに過失責任はありませんよ。まして、手塚らエンジンを始動させていませんので、音が目なしになること。あ、そっか。安心したよ。あと少しで知るは免許証がかかっていたからな。そうですね。That was just Sukai's style of joking around. Thinking that, Tomei shrugged her shoulders and laughed. Then he smiled back at her for a moment. But then he suddenly turned his gaze toward the ceiling and let out a sigh. やっぱり、そっくりだな。はい? Yeah. As he said that, Sukai leaned his body forward from the cushion he was using as a back seat and turned to gaze out the window. The sun was beginning to rise, and the light pouring in was dazzlingly bright. The cries of the cicadas were very noisy despite coming through the glass windows, filling the room with the feel of summer. Sukai kept silent and turned away from Tomoe to hide his expression. Even so, he gripped the blanket around his waist so tight that deep wrinkles were being carved into it. <笑>それも確かにあった。だが今思うと本当は罪滅ぼしの思いだったのかもしれない。罪滅ぼし。あの事件で逮捕された父親が裁判を待たずに獄中で死亡したことを聞いた。松美は。その死の真相を求めて関係各所を駆けずり回った持病があったとはいえ、休止するほどに悪かったわけではない。まして、自分の非を認めないまま自殺するような性格ではないと言ってな。俺ももちろん協力した。だが、現実は厳しいものだった。The body of Shigeru Unuma was subjected to judicial autopsy after his death. But the officer in charge didn't reveal the results of his, to his bereaved family, Masumi. Even when she asked about the cause of death, they never said anything more than acute heart failure. So, did he actually die from organ failure? Did he hang himself? Was he poisoned? She had no idea. But despite that, a few days later, a letter was discovered that he had allegedly written before his death. The letter was addressed to the people involved in the case, and he repented for causing it all. 
and said that he didn't have long to live. However, so na tegami, nise mono ni kimatte iru wa. Moshi oto sama ga honto ni shiki o satotte ita no nara, masaki ni watashi ni shiraseru hazu da mono. After saying that, Masumi dug into her savings, hired a lawyer, and repeatedly petitioned the, po petitioned the police to restart the investigation. She also visited the Ministry of Health and Welfare, where her father worked, and asked to interview people connected to him. But, in the end, all her requests were rejected. Even though she tried to bring it to court, the lawyer suddenly dropped the charges, and other mysterious developments had continued. In fact, the media seemed to, act to actively obstruct the investigation, spreading more and more slanderous articles, causing his schoolmates and even his close friends to gradually turn away. On top of that, Asumi got wide-eyed stares from the neighbors every single day. Her heart was torn, and she was driven nearly to the breaking point in despair. Dakara. At first, Masumi's goal was to investigate the mysterious death of her father. And yet, at some point she became entangled by hatred and resentment, turning more and more violent. And as the person closest to her, it was even harder for Tsukata to see her like that. So, he was prepared to abandon his dreams for the future, and suggested that the two of them move somewhere far away together. But... <laughs> That's rough. She had committed suicide by gas inhalation, dressed in her wedding gown. And on the desk next to her, there was a letter addressed to Sakata. Written inside was a single sentence. I'm sorry. きっと俺にひどいこと言ってしまったことで見捨てられたと思ったんだろうな。バカだよ。そんなことで嫌いになる関係なら親父が逮捕された時に当に別れていたってのに。ただ。そんなことも分からないくらい。なのに俺はそれに気づかずあの日彼女を一人にさせてしまった。それが俺の罪だ。What was she supposed to think when her lover had left her? Masumi was in the depths of despair when he left her alone in a huge dark room. It was sad and painful just to imagine it. Really, she probably wanted to depend on Tsukada. She wanted him to encourage her. And yet, even the people closest to her were doubting her and abandoning her after saying terrible things. After he calmed down, he realized his mistake and understood the magnitude of what she'd lost. But the support holding her heart together fell apart all at once. But she only wanted him to believe her thoughts. She had lost her senses and couldn't think properly. But the last thing she earnestly wished for was to end her life. ただの自己満足かもしれない。言葉が万能でないことも
大切な人に対してだけは神様のような存在でありたいと思うのはどうしようもない願望でなそうでなかった愚かな自分をそういうことだ勝手ですねトンボイ just consolately muttered that to herself thinking about the man she loved and realizing that he didn't understand how she must have felt must have really hurt Masumi and he was no saint but Tsukaya shouldered that burden out of a sense of obligation and poured his life into it thinking of the crass and lamentable ending these two suffered Tomoe felt her chest tighten in misery and mine In the end, the stronger and more pure your beliefs are. From an outsider's point of view, they can appear arrogant. Nah, Mirai. Ora, Konato. Donaranda. Sudeni, Anata, Oshoko Giwaku, no Juyona Sanko Nindes. Genzai, Watashi no Mutes no Cage Tachi, a Shimpen, or Katamete Masna. Isre, Tokyo Chicken no Katagata. あなたの身柄を確保して東京へと移送されるでしょうその日が来るのはそれほど遠くないと思いますじゃあその時がお前とのお別れだななりませんよいずれ会いに行きますから勝手に決めないでください<笑>バカ言うなよ俺はこれ以上、惨めな姿をお前に見せたくないんだ。たとえ来ても、面会は拒否するからな。だったら、もう一度かっこよくなったその時、私に連絡してきてください。逃げるのは、許しません。見ない。許しませんトメイ gazed straight at Tsukata with a sharp look in her eyes, and those eyes twinkled as she did. Looking at that face, Tsukata pictured another face overlapping with it, and spoke from the heart. Na, Masumi, kitto o mae ni hitsuo datta no wa. Kore datta nda yo. And at the same time, he came to a realization. What he was lacking was that sort of strong heart. To believe in someone and be willing to wait. Maybe if he had the compassion to fully trust her back then, this misfortune would never have happened. Kondo wa. Warikan da kara na. Eh. Tabe aru ki demo nan demo. Tsuki aimasu yo. Have her take her to have her take you to Angel Mort. What she'll do to all the food in there will shock you. After leaving Sukata under Taki、uh, Takiyashiki's supervision, Tomi decided to head back to Kakuji Station. Takiyashiki is a little older and more unsociable than Fujita, so it can be a little difficult to get through to him. Still, he had been a detective for countless years and was always faithful to his duties. So she, she had a favorable impression of him. She couldn't say with absolute certainty, but she believed she could trust him. <sighs> Feeling not so much sleepiness, but fatigue weighing down on her shoulders, Tomei let out a sigh. The National Police Agency, Prefectural Police Headquarters, NRIPS, the local police station, and the Tokyo District Prosecutor's Office. This series of incidents had gotten an unimaginably large number of organizations involved over the past half a year, and the end was finally coming in sight. A compulsory search of Goguro University Hospital. 
The site that prescribed Natsumi and Reina's medication was finally being organized and scheduled to be conducted tomorrow morning. But she still felt no sense of accomplishment. Maybe the scope was too large to get a reaction. Maybe she felt uncertain. Or maybe there was something else she hadn't yet realized. Plus, Shiro Hanada had, has been missing since that night. His wife and newborn baby are still living at home like usual. She was given a false story that he was on a business trip, but according to detectives on stakeout, there were no signs that she had any contact with him. Maybe it's because of all the run-ins with Fujita's overbearing wife, but... The indifferent reaction from Honda's wife felt odd to Tomoe. Yeah, I think it's worth investigating. Hana's wife was said to be beautiful, and their marriage was supposedly in perfect harmony. But if that's the case, no matter how much work required him to be away from home, it feels strange when she wouldn't even try to confirm her husband's whereabouts while living with a newborn baby. And if Hanada and his wife were actually were colluding, they'd probably try to keep in touch in some form to give each other status updates every few days. Nevertheless, his wife's manner of living just felt too normal. Thinking that, Tomei opened her notebook while stopped at a red light and jotted down a memo. Investigate the background of Shiro Hanada's wife. Thinking about it more, that inquiry probably could have been done much sooner. <laughs> to be honest, it was painful for her to admit that they had no clues to go on. She attempted a rolling investigation all across the city, but still had no idea where he might be hiding. He could be out of the city for all we know. Even after considering it from a profiling analysis angle, she can come up with a decisive factor that would drive a detective to turn criminal. It was also possible they were using Tomoe's profile analysis manuals to stay one step ahead of the investigators. Tomoe thought back to the moment when she, had, well, she was about to be murdered and recalled that Honda had stayed on scene until the last minute and tried to read into his thought process based on that. Honda seemed to enjoy seeing the results of his trap with his own eyes. Thus, it was hard to believe that he'd simply leave Kakuchi. Plus, Tomei and Tsukata were both still alive, so there was a chance he'd try to attack them again. <laughs> Tomoe saw the signal turn green and stepped down on the accelerator as she swore that in her heart. After turning off the main street at an intersection, she could see the Kakuchi Station building. Ore? As soon as she stepped inside, she found the station bustling for crowded people. Then, Fujita crossed in front of Tomoe looking panicked, but he quickly noticed her and stopped before she could call out to him. Oh? The sound of tumultuous voices grew even louder as soon as she approached the floor of the first division. Tomei and Fujita rushed through the lobby and opened the door to head in. Inside the room, investigators from Joint HQ were surrounding the TV besides the section chief, staring at the screen. Uh, 
ただ捜査員や病院関係者に加えて病院の利用患者そして野獣馬の数がすごくて現在の中の様子はちょっとわからない状況ですここれは That exterior was un unmistakable. It was the Gogura University Hospital where Tomoe had met Natsumi for the second time half a year ago. On the screen, she could see many men dressed in suits coming out of the door carrying cardboard boxes, cutting through a wall of humans and camera flashes. It was a completely unreal scene, like something out of a TV drama. But the distressed and remorseful expressions of the investigators staring at the screen were enough to make it clear this was reality. どういうこと捜査員ってまさか岐阜県警が独断でいえそれはありませんあっちの県警本部長には合同捜査本部の活動に協力するようにと警察庁から命令が下っていたので勝手な行動はできないはずです Tomi had heard from Maino that he completely nailed down that concern. Director Yamaguchi, the general manager of Joint Investigation H HQ, had informed them that he was the equivalent of Chief of Prefectural Police HQ as part of this endeavor. Of course they are. When Tome turned back toward that voice, she found the section chief of the first investigation division at Prefectural Police HQ, Dojima, standing behind her with his arms crossed and an intense look on his face. Dojima, Kachou, Kosei Shou, te, Masaka? So, Matori, Mayaku Torishimari Kanjimu Shou no Sosai da. Sonna! Meaning that Chiba's men are in there and they're scrubbing up the、uh, they're scrubbing the evidence as we speak. Is that what you're saying? To back up Dojima's assertion, the captions on the TV clearly said Ministry of Health and Welfare Narcotics Control Officers conducting search in hospitals. Son of a bitch! The judicial police force consists of more than just conventional police officers. And one group among them is the Nar Narcotics Control Office, under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Health and Welfare. These are special officers granted authority over narcotics control law, and they have the same level of jurisdiction as the police when it comes to cracking down on drugs and dangerous medication. In other words, they're authorized to investigate drug related criminal cases and seize re relevant evidence. マトリがなぜゴグラの病院に今朝入ったばかりのニュースだがとある開業医が診察において未認可の劇薬プラシルを扱っていた事実が発覚したそうだその医師は当然逮捕されたがそいつは以前ゴグラの大学病院に所属してい
ということはあそこの病院にある資料は全てサルベージされたな今頃本人に関係のあるとみなした資料は全部引き上げられて先手を打たれたな Damn it all to hell. <laughs> Standing beside Tomoe, Fujita slammed his fist on the desk in frustration. No, he wasn't the only one who was upset. All the detectives from the First Division, the Prefectural Investigation Team, and the members of NRIPS, every single one of them had furrowed brows and bloodshot eyes. Even as Dojima calmly explained the situation to Tomoe and her colleagues, he sucked down on a cigarette many times with trembling breaths to keep himself calm. But his eyes remained fixated on a TV. Plus, Tomoe herself was in a daze, with her forehead throbbing so hard it felt like the blood would come bursting out. <laughs> Hime san, where are you going? I'm gonna kill somebody! That's what I, where I'm gonna go! Where, wherever somebody is! <笑>決まっています。構成局の麻薬取締部です。すぐに回収した資料の引き渡しを。もうすでに要請した。だが拒否されたよ。なぜ？配合関係を調べ上げるためにも現状ではお渡しできる状態にない。<笑> 協力についてやぶさかではないがもう少し時間をよこせミニネニーとのことだミニネニータイムとスクラブディアブディアブディアンクリミネインエビデンスなそそんな On paper, drug enforcement officials don't have the power to refuse police requests and the police have no obligation to obey their orders but They were more than just separate organizations. NCO and the police had an absolutely terrible relationship. So when there's overlap between their investigations, they can be reluctant to divulge information without sufficient reason. And the content they do provide is often inadequate. Now where have we ran into this particular conundrum before? Several times, as a matter of fact. So you got on this car? Yatra to Steva Konkaino Yogi shouts come out to many Nanemo Chicano Kakete Kitasuda. Dakara Imasara Kesatsni Shashari de Korate Tamaru Katena Kibun Nandarosa. Joe Danzanai. What does that say? Konkaino Chicken Sosa no Tameni, Okuno Chicano Jinza Tony Sticky Master. To have this whole thing. It... As, even if you, even if I, if you can, it, okay, assuming for the sake of, of argument that we can take what's being told here by these guys at face value, they are basically screwing up an entire, a major investigation just for the sake of pride. Again, I'd be, I'd be in a murderous rage right now if I were in Tomoe's position. なのに、そんなお題目を唱えて厚生大臣の紙幣集団が何を踏んぞり変えているんです。そこまでしてこちらの邪魔をするつもりなら、今すぐ告訴して締め上げてやる。落ち着け、姫さん。おそらく、マト
Dojima gave her a pat on the shoulder to convey that he understood her feelings, then let out a huge sigh. What's weird? Fujita had been scornfully staring at the screen, but he suddenly turned back toward Tomoe and Dojima like he had thought something and spoke up. They had some they probably had somebody coordinating from within from within maybe uh, maybe on our side uh, maybe on our side of the investigation to help them out a mole in other words is that what you're getting at どういうことは我々は皆さんの情報をもとにゴグラ大学病院から処方されている未認可薬新型プラシルの原況を洗っていましたそしてその薬を服用している患者の実態もくまなく調査していたんですですからマトリが新型プラシルの存在に気づいて
そしてプラシロンの情報は例えば私たちの操作情報を見れば一目だから彼らはその資料を裁判所に提出して令状を受け取り今回の逮捕と強制捜査に踏み切ったきっつ,つまりそれって俺たちの捜査資料が Wait a minute. The same as, we're talking about the same investigation materials we just handed over to Soromachi, right? Tell my nod to Dojima to confirm, his to confirm his suggestion. In other words, they had an information leak. Someone at Joint Investigation HQ betrayed them and provided intel to NCO in order to prevent the police from obtaining new materials. In other words, a mole! Toyukoto! Hyotoste! Hanadaga? Yeah, sorry, I'm going to say that. Shingata Prasil no Kotoga Hamme Stanova. Yatsuga Yukueo Kuramaseta Atoda. Yakubuts no Kuashi Shiro Yatsuga Matorini Wataseru Wakegana. Ja, it's a daraga! 警察でマトリのご機嫌を取って得をする人間なんてこ,こいつだよえマイノ Looking back, マイノ had just entered the floor of the first investigation division and was standing behind them Then, when Tomei and the others gave him a puzzled look he gestured with his chin pointing behind him There stood Uchi surrounded on both sides by detectives A crestfallen look on his face. Ma Maeno san? Tatta ima hakasata yo. Tsui suzit mae. Hime san ga sosa hombu ni teishu shita shiryo o matori ni iru daigaku jidai no kouhai ni watashita ra shi. Doku dan de na? Na nan desu te? Masa ni kin shigan teki na hassou da na. Kono mama chiba o kenkyo shi. 彼の圧戦した未認可役のルートを壊滅させても手柄は家計権ひいては大内のものとはならないだったら厚生省側の身内に恩を高く売りつけて今後の自分の活動に役立てようとしたんだとよ<笑>わ私はただその合同捜査本部の捜査資料はなみんあんた一人の判断で。どうこうできる代物じゃない何を勘違いしやがったんだお前さんは大内さん There is a window right behind you You're welcome to toss him out of it I certainly won't stop you あんたはあんたは Even with all the people around scrambling to stop her, Tomoe put all her rage into her fist and slammed it square into Uji's face. I hope he bleeds. Unable to avoid the blow, Uji let out a pitiful squeal and fell to the ground. Then he looked up at Tomoe with his nose bleeding, good, he's bleeding, and a face full of fear and animosity, and shouted at her. What are you doing? Window! Throw him out of it! Fuchida just barely managed to grab Tomoe's hand before she was able to slug him again. Regained some strength upon seeing that, Uchi wiped away the blood on his face with a handkerchief. Oh, fuck off. Na 
When Uchi took a look around, he saw all detectives had fearless smiles on their faces and a fiercely shining light in their eyes as they looked down on him. Nevertheless, he tried to continue speaking, but the moment he opened his mouth, Mino knelt down in front of him, grabbed Uchi by the head in one hand, and stared him down. なあ、大内さんや。それよりも今回の一件、穏便に済むと思ってるのか let me guess. Monetary compensation? Yep! Uchi's shoulder slumped as soon as he heard that. Like he didn't even want to look at the man down at his feet. Mino held back his revulsion and let out a sigh. Yamamoto-san! Koko no ryuchi-jou, chotto okari shite mo ii desu ka? Ah. Ichiban oku no dokubou wa beibon ga koshou shite iru hazu da. Good. Soko o suke ni tsukau to ii. Ah, sora kaiteki sou desu ne. Tsurete ike. Under Mino's orders, two detectives escorted Uchi out of the room, standing on opposite sides of him. After seeing them off, Mino turned back toward Tomoe, who was still hoarsely breathing with her shoulders bobbing up and down. Then he smiled and spoke up. Oh, really did try to sue Tomoe. Not one person would testify on his behalf. In fact, they'd probably be, even be willing to commit perjury to defend her. You're all my, you're all my best friends, my true comrades. I'll buy you all drinks. Yeah, that's that frustrating doesn't even begin to describe this. You fucking better, otherwise I I will scream on behalf of Tomoe. Mino was likely holding back regrets of his own. He lowered his eyes and bit his lip for a moment. It didn't matter where, where they gathered, whether they gathered evidence or not. The mere fact that Goguro was rated and put intense pressure on Chiba and other members of AP. If that happened, it would lead to internal conflicts. Some people among them might consider withdrawing, which could trigger the entire organization to collapse. And yet, the actions of a single selfish person could have destroyed the work that so many people accomplished together. With that thought in mind, even Mino couldn't handle it. <laughs> After a quick bow, Tomei trudgingly headed to the infirmary. Her legs were heavy, as were her shoulders. No, her entire body. Even the pain from her bleeding fist was nothing compared to the wound in her heart.
After treating her hand, Tomei somehow didn't feel like returning to the first vision. So she wandered into the break room. Then she locked the door, approached an empty sofa, and practically collapsed as she laid down on it. Is that sofa comfy? Because you need to make some room because I want to collapse on it too right now. I felt fatigue on... She felt fatigue on her shoulders. Or rather, occupational burnout. She felt so beaten down she couldn't even sigh. The heat flared up in her eyes. And she turned to look up at the ceiling. Don't cry. Everyone wants to cry. But just because she's a woman doesn't mean it's good to cry about it. Even so, never before has she felt so disappointed, so sad, so miserable. Tomoe didn't know how to handle these feelings. As she gazed up at the blurry ceiling, various people's faces floated into her mind. Nagisa. Natsumi. Reina. Sukata. And. Hanada. <laughs> when Tomei recalled the miraculous, la the malicious laugh he let as they parted ways, she kicked the desk in front of her in a rage. In doing so, the ashtray sitting on top of it fell to the floor, spattering ash along the floor and filling the area with an unpleasant stench. <laughs> a sense of hopelessness, a helpless welled up inside to Tomoe, and she crouched down, clinging to her head. Is this... What happens when you fight an all-powerful politician? Unfortunately, yes. No matter how smart you are, or how many people are willing to stand up and cooperate with you, the enemy is always able to do more. It's like ants fighting an elephant. Totally beyond their power, like dealing with a higher dimension. She started this project thinking that but it felt like her heart was being filled with total darkness. And it wouldn't stop. Just then, the telephone in the corner of the room began to ring out loud, please be good news. Two, three, four times, and continuing, non-stop. She thought something was wrong, but she didn't feel like going to get it. And yet, by a tenth ring, she could no longer ignore it. So she let out a sigh as she stood up, then walked over and picked up the phone. Moshi Moshi. Ah, Mirai san, Takayashi desu. Saki keiji ikka ni denwa shita ra, tabun kochi da to iwaremashita no de. The call was from Taki of Takayashiki, in the hospital where Sukata was staying. Fujita or someone must have been able to predict she wouldn't come back to the first division. She wouldn't come back to the first division room. Sukata, I failed. I failed a big time. Go ahead and kill me now. Tsukada san ga? Then a short while later, the voice coming in through the phone changed. And when that voice called out Minai, Tomei nearly began to cry. Tsukada-san. I saw the TV. I did it. I'm sorry. Matori 
Seriously, so damn vigilant, I can't help but respect it. And be incredibly frustrated by it at the same time. <laughs> Being asked that so directly made her hold her tongue. <laughs> the Golgur University Hospital, their strongest potential source of evidence, was no longer a viable option. So they'd have to seek out evidence elsewhere. But where else is there? Even the Golgur University Hospital was something they only discovered thanks to Natsumi and Reina's bloodshed and cooperation. Even though Investigation HQ was still planning to keep going, with the prospects this dim, it didn't seem worthwhile to bother. <laughs> Nana. Those sweet whispers from Tsukada almost had her ready to surrender. But at the same time, Tomei noticed something. He wasn't the sort of person to call someone just to comfort them. Mata. So do we really have the time for these now, Cicada? And maybe instead of just giving me a test, you could actually give me a fucking lead? She swallowed down the weak words she had nearly spoken, then took a light breath. If Tsukada's attention was as she assumed, then there was only one answer she could afford him.諦めません。もう一度最初から捜査を行います。どこに分かりません。ですが、数週間前には絶望的だった状況でも、あと一歩まで攻め入ることができた。だから私はまだ諦めない。近いうちに必ず今度はもっと強力な陣営で戻って
その中に含まれていたはずだ<笑>俺が伝えられるのは本当にこれで最後だ頼むよ One last shot, huh? Alright, we can make this work. After saying that, the phone abruptly cut off. Then, after listening to the dial tone for a while, Tomei slowly hung up the receiver. Tonight, Loa was important drugs. The new Placel was among them. Which meant that if they could shut down this trade, they'd be delivering a miraculous come from behind counterattack. Just where was this trade happening? Well, if we're talking about drugs being shipped in from the country, maybe an airport would probably be a good place to look? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna bet it's the airport. As Tomei pondered that, the phone began ringing once more. Since she was still right beside it, she immediately picked it up and said, Hello? She could hear Maka's voice coming through the phone. Maka was a bit surprised because she wasn't expecting an answer on the first ring, but quickly regained her composure and asked Tomoe if she was alright. And hey! Apparently, Monica and I are on the same wavelength right now. ドンミルと製薬特に関連はないはずなんだけどなんかおかしくないもう妙といえば妙よね他にはそれからセントラル航空は下級地の航空省の準備として毎年特別便を出しているんだってへいリアルショーなんでも航空省に必要な機材と
But in the end, this was the only way for me. However... <laughs> Tomoe suddenly burst out saying that, then crumpled the letter addressed to Yamoki into a ball and tossed it into the trash can. Yamoki, Madoka, Fujita, and so many others. She thought she'd write down all her thoughts to convey them to everyone. But that all came out as an apology and some overstated excuses. She didn't think it was disgraceful, but she still didn't like it because it felt like she was embellishing herself. Tome was earnestly thinking of others and trying to communicate with them, like always. That was most likely something she learned from her repeated experiences of failure since her school days. So, it was fine. There was no need to leave behind a will. Though she was prepared for it, she had no intention of dying. You better not die, or I will protest. When she entered the room, there was nobody left inside. Since tomorrow's raid was cancelled, all the investigators were granted temporary leave in an effort to boost morale. Every name on the First Division's activities board was tagged with home leave. She slowly looked over the messy room. She always thought the space was small, but being here all alone made it feel very broad. She was never in particular she was never particularly fond of the bachelor pad stench in the room. But now the smell felt somehow warm and nostalgic. She took the resignation letter she wrote in the data room, along with her police badge and handcuffs, and sat them on the section chief's desk. But the extendable baton she carried in her jacket at all times? She decided to bring that with her. It was a personal item that Tomei herself had brought in, in the first spot in the first place. Even if it was found on her corpse, it wouldn't be classified as police equipment. Sate. Ikka. Tomei opened the door, and suddenly turned back like she remembered something, then stood up straight to don a salute. She then turned around and closed the door as she left the room. As she, as, she as she proceeded down the quiet hallway, a shadow emerged in front of her. Squinting to see better in the dark, she could tell it was her boss, Maino. Maino-san? To make my final stand. Tomei gently raised her face to look straight at Maino. He let out a sigh while adjusting his glasses, then spoke up. Come to think of it, she forgot to tell Takayashiki not to say anything. He must have been listening to her discussion with Tsukada. It wouldn't be strange at all for him to find the conversation troubling and report it back to Maino. その現場らしきところを突き止めました。千葉とローウェル社、その両方か、どちらかが取引に絡んでいる可能性があります。直接そこへ乗り込んで、その証拠を押さえに行ってきます。もしそれが本当なら、見張りも大勢いる。相手は
そこまでリスクの高い無茶をしなくても相手を追い込む手段は他にも数限りなくあるそれともお前はそれが信用できないのかい,いえ信じていますだから行くんです Tomi herself was surprised by how calmly she was able to say that. She really did have faith in mind, though. He would definitely use all his available connections and skills to improve the current situation. This deal Sukai had just told her about was their greatest and final chance to deliver a fatal blow to their enemies. They had entrusted Suramachi and his colleagues to handle Chiba, but hopefully, they'd still be able to offer them backup. And above all, they still had an opportunity to stop the new version of Placil from being dis distributed. Bashoa Kakiuchi Kuko Rinsetsu Goku Jie Tai Kichi Sono Shikichi Nai no Dokoka Nado Hodo Kyo a Han Yubika Goku Show Kakuremi no Nishteta to Ana. A few days ago, Arakawa had asked Maino for her to arrange tickets to the air show. Based on just that and Tomei's few replies, he was able to glean the criminal group's plans. <笑>警察を辞めた一般市民が不法侵入して偶然見つけたとでも言い張ってそれがお前の考えた秘策なのか冗談じゃねえだったらせめて令状を取るまで待ち上がれそしたらとても捜索令状をすぐに出してもらえ
or if he revealed it himself, the higher-ups at NPA would definitely get rid of him. He told Yamoki before that his role was to bear responsibility for his subordinates. But at the same time, it's his job to keep them from accepting unnecessary responsibility. So, he'd be casting her aside, or abandoning her, for the sake of his organization. He certainly did engage in a few suicide missions during his days at public security. It was a bold move to conduct an infiltration while guaranteeing the police wouldn't be held responsible if the operation failed. Nevertheless, could he actually give her the command to do something so outrageous? What's more, this is the daughter of a man he owed his life to. Mino took a deep breath and tried to normalize his breathing in an effort to keep all of the hesitation and stagnation in his head under control. But the air that came out was warm and stale, so it brought him no comfort. <laughs> それは刑事としての使命か。いえ、公僕としての義務です。市民の方々の税金で生きる者として果たすべきものを果たすだけです。When Mino heard those words, he pictured another person's face right in front of him. He was always the sort of man to say something that idealistic without any hesitation. But that's why he was able to convey his thoughts to her. His daughter was speaking the exact same words through her own mouth. Their shared blood was unmistakable. Thinking that to himself, Maya let out a huge sigh and adjusted his glasses. <sighs> They can disavow my ass all they like, just as long as it gets this asshole put away. わかっていますですから元刑事が暴走して錯乱してとんでもないことをやったと報告してください そして、もしちゃんと戻ってくることができたら、不法侵入と公安法違反の現行犯で逮捕していただけますか。絶対だぞ。絶対に逮捕させろよ。被疑者死亡なんてこと報告書に書く気はないからな。After that declaration, Mina walked past Tomoe and left the area. Tomei quietly bowed her head as she watched him go, then turned around and began walking forward once again. Suicide mission, huh? All or nothing. This is our last chance. Why not? I like these odds. So, I guess in the next episode, we can we can uh, begin our work to uh, prepping a last-minute miracle and counterattack. And hopefully, also in the next episode, we'll get to see whatever shred of the, of the big man himself, Chiba, watch all his big master plans go up in a puff of smoke and just fall to his knees in absolute despair as he is, as he's, he is taken away and put in, in a cell where he belongs. It would be so great to see that after all everything that's happened I hope I get to see it <sighs> well 
I was wrong about something super intense. Well, I, in a sense, I wasn't wrong about something super intense happening this episode. It just didn't happen in quite the form I was expecting. But it's looking to me like uh, the form in which I'm expecting shit to go down is actually going to start happening probably in the next episode now. Now that I'm going to do something as crazy as try to stop a deal... So, yeah. Guess we'll be saving all the big excitements next time. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of the Higurashi When They Cry console arcs. If you did and you'd like to see more content from me, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you all next time. Take care.